city that's played host to 10 Super Bowls. Here's a look inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. The setting in this dome just serves to amplify the excitement of the folks in New Orleans as their Saints burst from the tunnel a moment ago. They're set, and we're set as well as the Saints get ready to do battle with the Green Bay Packers. Possession of the football going back over to New Orleans now, and the Saints open the 2020 season hosting Tampa Bay for Tom Brady's welcoming reception into the NFC South, and they welcomed him rather rudely. And then they, they were kind of like the Saints, a high-performance engine because they needed a little bit to warm up. But after two touchdowns from their spark plug, Alvin Kamara, they really started to fire on all cylinders. And I think I just got enough cliches in there for a full football season, so I'll show myself out. Oh, you did well. Staccato, man. It just came one after the other. You were on a roll. I love that. But this New Orleans Saints team, they spent the entire offseason hearing about Tampa Bay, Tom Brady, all the additions, Gronk coming to town. And as their star defensive end, Cameron Jordan, said so eloquently, hey, we welcome Tom Brady and Gronk to the NFC South, and we welcome the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They'll just be playing for second place. I love that confidence that our New Orleans Saints team possesses. Four yards, the pickup, first down. And Brandon, you know that expression, he just does what he does? It sounds trite, doesn't it? But in this case, it's perfectly apt. This is one of the better runners in the NFL, and all he does it's just find avenues, find ways to pick up key first downs and big runs. Now a first down carry. It's Kamara. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Adrian Amos. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Here's second and nine. Now they'll throw with Breeze. That's complete to his running back, Kamara. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 11 yards there, first down. I like the play design there. They occupied the defense downfield. Everyone trying to account for someone. But unfortunately, they didn't account for the running back slipping out of the backfield. And he was absolutely unnoticed and wound up getting big yards on that play. On first down, Breeze. And it's hauled in by Jared Cook. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Eight yards on the pickup. They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way, work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover him? Corner, safety, linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. And he stopped immediately there. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. No gain on the play. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. So third and two, this quite possibly four down territory, though, if they're stopped. Here's Kamara, try to run for it. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. A pickup of five yards. First down, New Orleans. Had a chance to maybe limit them to three if they could have gotten that stop there, but a new set of downs. And with a new set of downs, you got to take the mentality of the whole thing. Right now, everyone's looking at the offense and saying they've got the advantage. The best defenses just say, okay, new set of downs gives us another chance to make a play ourselves and maybe change things up. And a short gain down to about the 33. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. You know, it's not just all athleticism from defensive linemen. Let's give them a little credit for their football intelligence as well. Read and react by them, understood the play call, and stacked it up and stuffed the run. On second down, Kamara. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Taking no gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. And nine. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Now Breeze on third down. 
And the catch made. This is Emmanuel Sanders. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers 20-yard line. Two veterans breezed to Sanders there for a Saints first down. on the draw gives to Kamara and this will be a gain of six when it's all said and done down to the 15 from the 21 down at the 15. a quick burst there and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain brings up second and four the last run got six now second and four Breeze leaves this one with Kamara Touchdown, New Orleans. 15 yards. And the Saints take it right down the field and score on the opening drive. And they do exactly what they wanted to. Opening drive, they get into the end zone. They do it on the ground. And not only is the person lugging the ball happy, of course, because he got it into the end zone. How about the offensive linemen and receivers who are blocking for him? They have to feel great about themselves. Sticking in the end zone on a running play. Lutz good on the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. This will make it into the end zone. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. Green Bay's offense coming back out here. And Charles, I want to talk about their week one game, the win over Minnesota. If anybody questioned whether Aaron Rodgers would be motivated to start this season, they shouldn't have questioned that. He was terrific. 364 yards passing, four touchdown passes, two of those to Devontae Adams in that 43-34 victory over Minnesota. Boy, they were so smooth in that game. Came out of it like they had a tremendous preseason. They played preseason games, looked the part, didn't they? Executed from the word go. You mentioned how great Rodgers was. Also spread the ball around a little bit, too. So this is a Packers team. They heard all the whispers in the offseason about being 13-3, and three and it was a fluke. They wanted to prove against a division opponent who's really good, Minnesota, that it was not a fluke, and Aaron Rodgers is on top of his game. Those 43 points, by the way, the most that the Packers have scored in an opener in franchise history, and going back to Rodgers, he moved past Eli Manning and into seventh place on the all-time passing touchdown list. Yeah, and how about the schedule for them now? They host Detroit, and then a monster game in New Orleans against Drew Brees and the Saints. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Shotgun now for Rodgers. And the Saints pressure gets him. Locked down for a sack. Credit that sack to Marcus Davenport. Off a great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. Well executed there on second down. So do you go back to the air on third? Well, that's a possibility. But now you've opened up things to where you showed that you would run the ball in long distance situation. You might come back again because I doubt they believe you'll do it a second time. From the gun on third down, Rodgers. And Rodgers is going to go down. He's sad. Sheldon Rankins abruptly ends that play with a sack. Hindsight is 20-20, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O-line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. 
On is the punt team now as this one sent away. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Saints will take over with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. Now they'll be looking to duplicate the efforts of drive number one that resulted in seven points in the seven-zip lead. Well, you know how much I enjoy horse racing, right? Looks like they caught a flyer out of the gate, as they would say, when you're running the big-time races. It means they get out to a fast start. They're setting the pace, making the other team chase now. And he'll take this one up over the 20 to the 21-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going, and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. They also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. The best time to call a draw when you think it's going to have the most success is usually after you've thrown the ball a bunch of times and had success that way, where they think that, oh, here comes another pass play. All they want to do is get to the quarterback, and then you fool him and hand it to a runner, and he slides by, usually for big yardage. And this is what you want to see from a defense. Give up an opening drive touchdown, that's fine. But how about them going back out there, recommitting themselves to the task at hand? and forcing a three and out and giving the ball back to their offense. Here's Thomas Morstead on now to punt it away on fourth down. Tyler Irvin back deep. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it'll be Packer football here. First down and ten. The Packers offense here coming back out for their second drive and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs, and that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Rodgers will break the huddle and bring the pack up first and 10 at their 35-yard line. He'll set up the throw from the gun. Gets this to his running back, Aaron Jones. But call it a gain of five, and it's a second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Ball at the 40 here for second and five. From the gun, it's Rodgers. That's complete to the former Aggie, Jay Sternberger. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. It's a first down on a gain of 10. First down. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they've become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Now a first down carry by Jones. And he's going to take this across the 50 and into Saints territory. Tackle there by Alex Anzalone. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. That's a jet sweep. This is Adams. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. A loss on that play. And now third down gets tougher. Third and six. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. For Saints seven, Packers nothing. And for the Saints here on third down, an extra defensive back on the field. Shotgun now for Rodgers. It's caught, Jones. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 37. Give him 10 there, good enough for a Packer first down. 
Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up the first down. So now on defense, you assign a man to him and try and cover it before he gets going. Adams hauling it in from Rodgers. And he gets it down to the 32. Devontae Adams, quite the opener that he had in Minnesota. 14 catches, 156 yards, threw in two scores as well. And those 14 catches, by the way, tied Don Hudson for the most in one game in Packers history. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Working from the gun, Rodgers. It's caught here by Adams. And he will get this into the end zone. Touchdown, Green Bay. Devontae Adams, 32 yards. And the Packers are within an extra point of tying this thing up. On is Mason Crosby for the point after. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. Game at seven. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. The Saints offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to something so else. And maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players. And maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs. Run some plays, run some clock. Allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath. Settle down and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Play action is supposed to be used to slow down pressure, slow down blitzes. In this case, though, if it takes a little too long to develop, you got people right in your face. And lucky just to get rid of the ball with the arm going forward. Could have been a fumble. The Saints on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This will be third and six. Shotgun now for Breeze. Out of the backfield. That's complete to Kamara. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Good An effective seven-yard third down conversion. First and, ten at the and there's a catch and a first down by Alvin Kamara. And he can shake you in the open field. He can also drop a shoulder and run through. And you want to talk about a consistent player. How about his receiving numbers per season for each of his first three years? 81 catches, 81 catches, and 81 catches. Alvin Kamara. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on at its second down. Again, it's Breeze. Packer pressure, and down he goes. Zadarius Smith. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man, and each man did his job. 
and that looked like vintage old school coverage didn't it man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team they had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a defensive player of the year at the other and they just locked people down he's got his all pro receiver Michael Thomas and he'll go down to the ground at the 39 and obviously that's well short of the first it'll be a gain of 12 but it will also lead to fourth down Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown. Now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. So from the 17 now, here's a 10. A pass there over the middle to start things out. A gain of six there on first. Good catch by Marquez Valdez Scantling, and that's something that his teammates needed to see and something he needed for himself. They call him MVS, and they want him to become an MVP type of a receiver. Speed to burn. He can stretch the field. They just need him to be as dependable catching the ball as we saw there throughout the season. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. So many times someone's success is the product of a lot of things coming together really well. And for Aaron Jones in 2019, it all came together for him. He stayed healthy, was on the field for all 16 games, got handed the ball 100 more times last year, and as an end result, broke 1,000 yards in a season rushing for the first time in his career. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a gain of 12, and the Packers have the first. One of the underrated aspects of Devontae Adams' game is his toughness. He had to battle his way through injury last year, and while his numbers may have dipped, he was still the number one target for the Green Bay Packers and their quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, and still one of the best receivers in the league. Constantly works on his footwork, constantly works on how he gets away from defenders in order to get open. He's a guy that number 12, his quarterback, trusts implicitly. This defense has really flown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. On second down now. It's Jones, and he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. It's a gain of a yard. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense, and guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Throwing his Rodgers on third down. And he will be hit from behind and so-called little guys putting the pressure on. That was a strong safety. When I was in college, we often called that a lightning blitz. Here's J.K. Scott now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. From the gun, he'll set up the throw. That'll be complete to Cook. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. This is complete to Michael Thomas. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Seven yards there and a first down. 
first and An ex teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. And he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Second down and eight. From the gun, it's a run for Kamara. He'll get about three as he's brought down right around the 42. To Alvin Kamara. Jair Alexander on the tackle. That's a gain of three. Now third and five. The Saints on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This will be third and five. From the gun, it's Breeze. as he was throwing it, and the ball drops incomplete. Putting pressure on the guy throwing the football is always good, but when you can couple that with contact on him that leads to an incompletion, as we just saw there, that's winning football. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he's on to punt for New Orleans. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. ready to take over. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Going up top. Intercepted. Instead, second down. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. To throw again. Rodgers. And he's taken down. Back in his own seven. Jammer Jordan so tough to block as he gets in there to record the sack. Now Charles dealing with a third and long. They'll have to try to go back to the air again and this time avoid the sack. Certainly hard to try to establish momentum when all you're doing is going backwards, not protecting the passer, and he gets dumped on his backside. On third and long, it's Rodgers. And able to get this one out just shy of the 25 at the 24. That was no third and two. That was third and 16, but they get the conversion anyway. First down. I remember when Al Mazard came out of Iowa State, many questioned his speed and wondered if he could separate from defenders downfield. He got pressed into action in the middle of last year due to injury for Green Bay and wound up second on the team in receiving yards as he developed and got better each and every week. Remember that Monday night game against the Bears partner? A late touchdown and a big comeback victory. Rodgers to throw on second down. And that's complete to Adams. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. The last catch did get three, but they're still left needing seven yards on third down. From the gun, Rodgers. He's got Adams on the hookup. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And the Packers. I like that one, partner. They go back-to-back -back with excellent gains, 
and really it shouldn't be a surprise who they were throwing the ball to. He's their best guy. Yeah, we knew that they would get him involved early. They're doubling down on getting him involved early. Don't be surprised they'll come right back to him again. They haven't shown the propensity to be able to stop him. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 11 more on that one and another first down. Packers. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Rodgers' throw is taken in by Jones. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Rodgers again now. And he's taken down here by the Saints. Now the Packers going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. now after the sack he'll lead the pack up on third and long operating from the gun Rodgers that's complete to Lazard and this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 26 boy a nice play there as they wind up converting on third and 15 and when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. The Saints, 23-yard line. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. This is a 40-yard attempt from the left hash. And the 13-year man puts it through. And the Packers are off to a 3-0 lead. So a late three there, and that'll help as they head into the break. Talk about situational football and something they've worked on since the OTAs and mini camps the previous summer. They take care of the ball, get three points, knowing they're going to get the ball to start the second half. That's the old two-for-one special to finish things off. Seven seconds to go in the half as the kick is away. On the return, Deontay Harris. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. Likely time for just one final play, and then it'll be off to the locker room to talk about how they can erase this deficit. Yeah, and I think a lot of people look at it and go, well, maybe you take a shot here. Maybe you get some momentum going into the half. What's the flip side of that? You do something crazy, quarterback gets hit, ball comes free, and now you're down an even bigger margin. Go ahead and take this one, go to the locker room, start over. Looking here for Smith downfield. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. A good, tight football game thus far. 10-7 the score as we resume action on EA Sports. 
And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> Show them one thing, hit them with something else. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Two yards, good enough for first. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. So from the 36 now, first and 10. On first down, it's Jones. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Alexander. Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. 38-yard line, second and nine. Now they'll throw with Rodgers. He hits his target, the tight end Lewis. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that will pull you out of that spot they want to get into. And that's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. That's hard to do. When you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards it. But you got to think that sooner or later, they're going to hit one of those. But the coverage has been excellent thus far, and it was again on the last play. Here's J.K. Scott now as he's on to punt for Green Bay. And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six-yard line. Six-yard line. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. Off the play fake to Kamara, it's Breeze. Looking long for Thomas. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Breeze now to throw. And brought in by the tight end Cook. And they'll get him down up past the 15, just shy of the 20. 12 yards there and a first down. First well, I think we got evidence right now that this team's not going to be daunted at all. Just because they're backed up doesn't mean they're not going to continue to throw the football. They threw an incompletion on first down, but they came right back on second down and threw it again. And this time they hit it for not just good yardage, but a first down. Breeze's throw on target to Cook. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. And he takes us up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. 11 yards there, 
first down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it, but it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people were worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Second and 12. They have three tight ends in that formation that's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football but how about the defense there they met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss on second and 12 breeze incomplete I know we spend a lot of time talking about how the defensive backs read routes and, and make plays on the football. How about a good linebacker feeling the route, seeing the quarterback, jumps the play, and knocks it away. Really well done. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now Breeze. They'll set up the screen now to Camara. Yeah, that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. And a loss of three to bring up four. It's Boy, how good has this defense been seemingly all game long? I really think right from the first snap, I think you're really onto something there. In this passing game, it just can't get off the ground. And that play, it wound up losing yardage. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. Oh, the return is Irving. A very nice punt that time, but they get 11 back on the return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Now trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. Shotgun now for Rodgers. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. Sheldon Rankins able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Rodgers with a give. It's Aaron Jones. And a nice run past the 30-yard line there. The ball carrier. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Shotgun now for Rodgers. Got an open man. It's Valdez Scantling. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. Punt of 38 yards officially. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. A gain of six there on first. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Now Breeze. He gets this one complete to Traquan Smith. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Seven yards there at a first down. The start for them near flawless. Defense gets them a three and out. Two quick pass connections on offense. So that's how a team works together. Just what you described. Get them the ball, give them a little momentum, and they're capitalizing off of that. Thanks a lot, guys. 
A give. This is Kamara. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. Big Kenny Clark that time pushing up field to make the tackle for loss. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Now on second and 13. Breeze. And this one complete to Smith. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. At the 47-yard line. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 47. Shotgun now for Breeze. And his throw is incomplete. The pro bowler Michael Thomas was the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Glad to be in the great city of New Orleans, rolling along here in the third quarter, second and ten. Breeze now. And this is caught for the ground. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers 35. 12 yards there and a first down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players. Somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Three yards of the game there, second down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tough for guys trying to get to the football. That's complete to Sanders. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers 16. 16 yards, a first down. Good catch there by Emmanuel Sanders, and he's exactly who you want in your locker room and who you want on your team. He can integrate into an offense quickly. He joined the San Francisco 49ers at midseason last year and had a huge impact in their run to the Super Bowl. He's a veteran receiver that everyone respects. And yes, he can still play. And he's able to get this inside the 10 now to the 9. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. And that's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Second and three from the 9. <laughs> to throw is Breeze. And this one incomplete. Breeze. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Down near the goal line, things really get physical. You're always anticipating a running play, but when they do throw it, things happen quickly. A little bit of a bang-bang play there that falls incomplete. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Bree's going to throw. for the Saints touchdown. It's Breeze getting it into the hands of Traquan Smith. And once again, the Saints are back out in front. A lot of people might call this backyard football. Sometimes just understanding who you've got out wide and who you're going to throw it to. Give him an opportunity to go up and make a play, even when contested. Looks like that one worked out pretty well. The trust factor, in effect. Lux with the extra point, and the lead is now 14 to 10. Touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. 
Take it in at the three. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And they'll be looking to avoid what happened last time, which is punting the football. But when you look at how teams play the game, that complimentary football comes into play. How do I take care of my defense? How do I take care of my offense? Well, the defense is taking care of them in a lot of ways. Now it's time for the offense to jump things up and help their defense out. Give them a little bit of rest. Yeah, time, time for them to give them a rest. Took the words right out of my mouth. Three yards the game there, second down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Second and seven. They'll try the jet sweep here with Lazard. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and it'll result in a fresh set of downs. Back now here live in New Orleans. It's the Packers who have the football, but in need of points as we begin quarter number four. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Throwing again on second down. Rodgers, and that'll be incomplete. That was a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides. And there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. The Packers on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This will be third and six. From the gun, it's Rodgers. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. So a big break. The roughing the kicker called on fourth down leads to first and ten. Rodgers to throw once more. He'll get this one into the hands of Lewis. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. On the delay, Jones. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I'll bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and we'll still get the first down. They love being physical. Rodgers now on first down. And this one caught along the sideline, but they say already out of bounds. And the throw didn't give him a chance to turn it upfield, and that brings up second down. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Throwing again, Rodgers. Dancing to his left. And he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage as he's going to be taken down. Alex Anzalone in there to drop him, and that is the seventh time tonight that he has gone down. Third and long. 
Rodgers now, after the sack, he'll lead the pack up on third and long. Working from the gun, Rodgers. He'll get this to Lazard. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. A short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before. The offense staying out. They're going to go on fourth and two. They'll run it with Jones. And all the way down inside the five to the four. It's first and goal after they rip off a solid chunk of yardage in the ground game on a risky fourth down call. Remember, that was fourth and a full two yards. There's a big difference between that and fourth and maybe six inches or a yard. Yeah, you're exactly right, because when it's that six inches, you just fall forward and you pick it up, right? You just go quarterback sneak. But having to move bodies, that means you actually have to execute because they know what you're going to do. How are you going to make the right play call and get everyone into the... And he's going to go down. Sack back at the 13-yard line. Demario Davis coming in for the sack that time. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So first down went in the wrong direction. They're at the 13-yard line. Here's second and goal. A give to Jones. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. Nothing doing there as the 13th play of the drive proves to be unlucky. There's no question that coming into this game, this defense is pretty vocal about his desire to take this running back out of his game. And all that pregame whooping has turned into results. For the lead, here's third and goal. From the gun, Rodgers. It's caught here by Adams. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. They wind up with six on the hook up there, but it's not enough. Fourth and goal. Well, they were successful in one sense. They completed the pass, but still leads them to a tough fourth down situation, doesn't it? It does, and the deficit more than three here at a one-score game. So the field goal, not their ideal situation. Seven-yard attempt. The kick by Crosby is good. And the lead is down to one now at 14-13. So with that field goal, this one's now back within a field goal. Maybe not the ultimate result they wanted, but gets them that much closer. This game is unfolding like a really good book, isn't it? Because I feel like there's a few more plot twists yet to be revealed before this one is over. set to take over. I guess the good news as they start this drive is that they, they still do have the lead, Charles. If their defense hadn't been able to hold them to a field goal on the other side, they'd be down. But now it's about preserving that very small lead. It is preserving and maybe stretching it out a little bit because if you're a starter on that side of the ball, I certainly hope you didn't loosen up your shoulder pads just to the table because if you did, you did it way too soon. They've got to go back out there with renewed vigor, for lack of a better term, and also a good plan. They need points, and they need them now. So following the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 25. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. That'll be complete to Cook. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 16 yards, a first down. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, 
And they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. The busy night continues for Kamara. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Preston Smith there on the stop. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. That one, a first down pickup of eight. But they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now, if you're a play caller, you could do just about anything you want. But on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? Trailing in the fourth this close of a game, that's a penalty you just can't afford. It's an absolute killer, and it's one that drives coaches and teammates insane. So now a fresh set of downs, first and ten after roughing the passer. Play action, breeze. Looking again for Thomas, this time complete. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. That's another gain of 15 on back-to-back -back plays. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down, stomped down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Into the red zone, it's Breeze. This will be caught just inside the 10. And all the way down inside the 5 to the 4. 11 more yards that go around. A first down as well. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. Try to pound it in, Kamara. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Well, it's apparent the defense understands the situation. They have to keep them out of the end zone here. That's a great start by them. A loss on that play. Can they force them into a field goal attempt and still give their offense an opportunity? Second down and goal. Breeze. The quick slant caught. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. A gain of three yards. It's now third and goal. About a half yard from the end zone. Third and goal. They'll run it with Kamara, and he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. It's now fourth down and goal. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This is a fairly straightforward 22-yard short attempt. His kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, it's a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they feel a whole lot better about their position.
position. Uh, the touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. Take it about a yard deep. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. So now Rodgers in the pack. Down 17-13. A minute 54 on the clock. They need a touchdown. A field goal is worthless now as they come up on first and 10. Scantling over the middle. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Aaron Rodgers so cool in these situations, but he's got to get his guys moving. Yeah, they have to be able to have that urgency while still keeping their cool. Clock running, about to hit 90 seconds to go in the game. Now Rodgers. And that's complete to Adams. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. Obviously a big first down right there. Yeah, they still got to hustle. They got to get up to the line of scrimmage and get set. But I don't think necessarily you need to spike it. But they've got to continue to move quickly. First down now, but the clock continues to move. He's back to throw. Escaping the pressure right. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. And finally down at the 32-yard line. 23 yards on the tuck and run. All right, partner, I'm a defender, but I've got to express my admiration there. Moving around, making it happen, and instead of worrying about protecting himself, he goes and gets the first down. I've got to give it to him on that one. Normally, you don't want your guy taking shots, your quarterback, but... It's winning time here in the fourth quarter. If he needs to make those plays with the legs, go ahead, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, at this stage of the game, all protections, they're off. The Pro Bowl wideout, Devontae Adams, his intended receiver. But it'll be second down. Here's second and ten now from about the 32. He'll look to throw. A dump underneath the Jones. Rogers pass. Five yards. Now it's third and five. And remember, field goal does them no good in this situation. You got to think they should be taking some shots for the end zone soon. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts as he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. Catch on second down, but it didn't help at all. And now they're looking at third down here. Back to throw. Incomplete. And we're down to eight seconds now. Intended for Ellis Lazard. Incomplete. It's now fourth down. Down four late, got to go for it here on fourth down. They'll go for it. It's Rodgers. And that's complete to Lewis. And a timeout comes in. The whistles blow with three seconds remaining. Now a first and 10 at the 11. One final try now for Rodgers. Flush to his right. And he's going to keep it here. And they will score. It's a Packer touchdown. Aaron Rodgers. 
finding the end zone on the game's final play. So it's all over. A Green Bay victory. And you look back over the score sheet, interesting. A very clean game. No turnovers by either side. An absolute rarity when we watch games now because defenses have put such an emphasis on taking the ball away. Well, what we saw here was offense is spending their time saying, look, you know they're coming for it. Ball security is paramount. So they worked on that, not just a week of practice, but I'm sure all during training camp. Make sure when you have it, tuck it away because danger lurks everywhere you turn. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. From New Orleans, good night, everybody.